so uh, welcome to the video. Uh, today I am heading out to fish the river. I can guarantee a whole heap of one to two pound rainbows to keep you entertained before I get the brown, um, if I get the brown. So I'll just show you the setup I've got today. I'm, I'm using a new Daiwa Shinobi combo. It's a seven foot, one to three kilo line rated rod. It's supposed to throw two to eight gram lures. Um, this is a, also a Shinobi reel. It's really silky smooth. It's size 2000. It's got like six ball bearings or something like that. Um, and on there is about 200 meters of six pound braid. And that's 0 0.08 millimeters thick. Then I have some Black Magic six pound fluorocarbon which is really supple and really disappears in the water so that's why I've decided to use it also it's sort of fairly abrasion resistant when it comes to trees and things and then on there I'm just starting out with this little uh, Australians call them blades um, other people call them vibes uh, things like that because they just do that weird vibration in the water uh, that's just a 3.5 gram 3.5 centimeter uh, lure with two little trebles on it and that lure I actually bought offline for 47 cents um, in terms of other lures that I'm taking along with me today uh, of course got the old Toby's bladed spinners uh, we got a black magic uh, spinner bug thing whatever these are called they work pretty well in certain conditions uh, and then I got the old like bib lure these are pretty trashy ones because they were cheaper Chinese models um, haven't really gotten around to finding a Rapala lately then I've got um, a heap of soft baits because those are kind of probably going to be my uh, primary lure today so you got your paddle tails um, you got your smaller wiggly paddle tails that are more like the smelt somewhat then you got these orange grubs these are really good for big browns they, they really like the color for some reason as well as the white ones here um, we got the odd like little crayfish looking thing here as well um, so those will be interesting to see if they work since there's so many uh, crickets around this time of season there is also the odd crayfish up there so could be interesting I've uh, got a bunch of jig heads of different sizes here been experimenting with this new 47 cent lure and it's not very good in this faster water it sort of jumps out the water a lot but uh, first cast this guy came steaming out and nailed it as you can see now I just need to unhook him without um, the kind of downside about spin fishing is uh, treble hooks of course but this guy even though he's small and they tend to get worse hurt by trebles he's just fine he got a little hook in the mouth but I managed to get it out without damage so he should shoot off just fine and off he goes straight off powering upstream so uh, yeah didn't take long first pull decent little pretty rainbow he's just firing up the river just here board I got that little rainbow with the um, little blade this 47 cent blade offline now I've changed to a jig head which cost me less than 10 cents because I got six of them for 50 cents offline and they're pretty decent little jig heads as you can see and on that is a little soft bait I also got offline which is white paddle tail uh, stretchy looks like a little smelt and uh, that was like 10 for a dollar or something like that offline as well so that's looking pretty decent in the water um, I'm gonna start flicking my way up getting to the good water so I changed to that little white soft bait I've missed one decent fish that came and smacked the tail in the slack then I put another cast in the slack a little while later and this guy came out smack engulfed it and I've hooked this one little white soft bait there how's he hooked you gotta find the angle with these there you go see that easy as no no hurt to the fish at all and smell off he goes Yep, there's a fish. Good timing on the camera there, boys. I, as I cast, I turned the camera on because I had a feeling there'd be one, one or two out there. So, <laughs> literally, as it turned on, hook up. Not a big fish, but a powerful little rainbow. Good condition this whole season, so it would be good. He's really fat, fat little fella. Shoots. 
right so I've had a flick up here along this little shallow bank here it's probably about 10 to 20 centimeters deep and this guy's come careening out and smoked the lure now the cool thing about this willow these willow roots here um, which is really soft and damp so basically it's 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 a perfect little fish landing pad as you can see you take a step moisture so super damp super soft perfect for landing your fish and unhooking There you go, hook out. Pretty little rainbow. Swims off. Lovely. Took it of cast after that last fish. Put one in the same spot and another feisty little rainbow comes and takes the lure. So uh oh, calm it mate. Oh shh. I did muscle them in a bit. There you go, hooks out. Wash your fingers. There he is boys. Just a beautiful little rainbow. Off, I think. Um, yep, it's a little bigger. Absolute rocket of a take. Smacked it. I had cast. Oh, this is it brown? Oh, it is brown. Lovely. Love browns. So he came out of under these trees and absolutely smoked the lure. I'm going to take him over here to these willows. I could net him, but it's a bit more uh, quick and easy if you get him on the moist, soft willow roots. And when you have access to them, they can be really useful. Uh, very nice. All right, hooked to the bottom of the jaw here. So, just got to pull them. See that? Easy as that. There he is. Awesome. Lovely fish. See that? I'll show you the what's cool about these willow um, roots here. Is, see that? Just moisture nice and soft perfect for landing and releasing fish without any uh, health hazards you know here boys hopefully it looks looks like it when he took it certainly felt it oh yeah it's a bit bigger for sure I can see this is a good fish when he took um, I couldn't stop him eh? he, he got right up uh, he was basically uh, sitting just as that tree stopped this rainbow and I landed it, the lure in the tree and as it as I plopped it off the tree branch into the water this guy smoked it instantly he's a little bit bigger so you know he's probably the fish of the day he's pretty similar size to that last brown but he's getting bigger getting up there so you know that's what you want oh and off goes the lure so I don't have to touch him so that's sick Three fairly decent fish. I think it's possibly due to a lack of drag on this hook set. So what I'm doing is I'm casting right up in the gullies and then I'm setting the hook on fish like that. Oh, that's decent. Oh, what a take. So that's what I'm doing, casting into the right into little nooks and gullies. And then when I feel a little tap, then I set the hook like that. And these guys get yanked out there he is so that was about a two pounder um, and that was the second cast in a row that I'd done that exact thing so now guys I need to give a shout out to Robbie Fishing Robbie Alexander from Robbie Fishing on YouTube uh, so he's been a pretty decent inspiration for me to get out here and do some spin fishing this morning I was watching one of his uh, spin fishing videos for trout in Australia and I was thinking, yeah, that'd be pretty choice uh, to get out and do today. So that's really the reason I came out here to, to film for you guys. I thought, why not get out and, you know, get amongst the fish. That was a perfect little cast and a little bit of shadow water out there. Surprised nothing hit that. Um, yeah, so hit him up, have a look at his channel. Hit him, uh, give him a subscribe, you know, get over there and if you're starting out spin fishing he's a really decent uh, dude to have a look at um, he sort of helped me a lot when I started out spin fishing gives you all the tips and tricks just a little this is just a uh, juvenile fish just coming out of his par markings you can still see them um, which is 
interesting for a fish of this size. He's just got his power markings, they're just fading there. Um, so he's just sort of maturing, um, getting a bit bigger. So he's obviously got a fair, fairly decent food source. And there's a heap of them in the river, so you know, you could spend all day in these little shadowy areas pulling them out like that. Perfect spot just there, probably a fish in there if I haven't spooked the heck out of them with that last guy. Probably have Pro tip for you guys when it comes to spin fishing for trout and fly fishing really, um, where you want to target your casts is structure. So you see some structure over there like a, a tree with branches protruding into the water, you want to get your cast above that so that the current brings it through uh, just in front of the structure and the fish will be sitting under the structure looking out waiting to ambush prey so your lure goes in in front of it then you bring it across the front of the structure like this and if there's a fish sitting there he should come out and smack it so basically if I had to give you a tip about gear it'd have to be go light so 1 to 3 kg so anything from sort of 1 to 6 kilo rated gear that's probably perfect for you guys um, for spin fishing for trout um, in terms of line I'd go with 6 pound, 4 to 6 pound don't go below that you can go above that if you really like I've done it with 20 pound braid and that's fine I just prefer thinner because you can cast further like that um, with really no effort. Uh, when it comes to lures, just look in your shop, they'll be in the freshwater section. There's a fish after it there. He didn't quite get uh, he, uh, he, he, he grabbed it right at my feet and I didn't hook him because he was quite small. I didn't want to set the hook and deal with him. So anyway, uh, lures, yeah. Your local sports shops will have a little selection of freshwater lures. So Toby's, bladed spinners, um, spoons. Rapalas, there's a little fish. Um, that's a really small fish, wow. <laughs> yeah, so look in there, grab one or two of those lures. This is a beautiful little brown trout. Um, so that's really all you need in terms of gear. It's fairly simple, you know, rod reel, line, and lure. Um, there he is, beautiful little brown. Swims off. Um, then when it comes to technique, really simple. With most, pretty much all lures except soft baits, some soft baits, you cast in like that, you start retrie retrieving the lure, you just want to retrieve it at a pace that the lure itself is moving the way it's supposed to, so this lure, the blade on the, on the central wire spins around at a very fast pace, sends out vibrations that attract fish and trigger their uh, predatory instinct, they want to hit it, um, as the last couple of fish have just indicated. Um, with, so with rapalas, they just dig in with their bill and they just do that. And that's just due to water pressure running over the bird. So as I was saying, technique pretty simple, just flick it up, let it drop just underneath structure. Oh, there's another fish. And uh, that's the other thing, set your drag so that the fish is able to pull line before anything on your gear breaks. You don't want to have the lure bend, you want the line to snap. Uh, and the other thing is, sometimes it's just fun to let the fish fight a bit, but trout, you just want to take it nice and easy with them usually, makes it a bit more fun. Uh, that, here's another pro tip for you guys, single hooks. Stick to the single hooks, uh, you'll find it's much better for the fish's safety. That's only if you're doing catch and release. If you're after keeping fish, I strongly recommend that you get this treble hooks. Um, the only problem is that you want to be sure that you're going for the keepable sizes and you don't want to be catching undersized fish on trebles because it's really not good for them. Um, so yeah, what else can I tell you about gear recommendations technique? Uh, oh yeah, uh, cast upstream when you're in rivers. So 90% 90, 90 of the time at least I cast upstream and I bring the lure back down towards me. That way the fish is facing upstream uh, the lure's going past his face, he turns around, starts following it downstream, grabs it before it gets to me. If you cast downstream like that, the lure is going to swim by itself. As you can see in the rod tip there, the pressure of the current is doing enough work for me that it's just going to work the lure by itself. But when it comes to the point where I'm trying to reel in, there's too much pressure and the lure is jumping and skipping along the surface, which is not good for trout. Sometimes Kawai will love that, but trout, no. So... You want to keep the lure under the water. If a fish is following that lure and then it jumps out across the surface and spatters around, 
that's going to put the fish off and he's going to be gone. When it comes to gear, don't stint. Don't go for the cheap warehouse gear because what you're going to end up doing is buying warehouse gear and warehouse gear and warehouse gear. It's just going to keep breaking and you're just going to keep going back and buying more of it. And by the time that you've actually figured it out that you should have just bought quality gear at the start, you're going to have spent enough to buy that quality gear on crap that's all broken on you. So you might as well just sp spend the money on the good gear, only have to buy one set, save yourself time and money, and also fr frustration because it's going to be a lot easier for you to get fish with the good gear like this. As you can see, I'm just flicking these lures and they're flying across the river exactly where I want them to go. The lures swimming perfectly because I've got the right retrieve rate. It's all silky smooth and easy. Catching fish is much easier than when you have a reel that's draggers going all haywire and they're screaming off with zero pressure on them from your reel or too much pressure and they're snapping your line. You don't want any of that to happen. So get the good gear. Here's a little uh, pro tip for you fellas. Lips are hot spots for feeding trout. So what I mean by a lip, there's a run, comes along, and as it drops off, the gradient changes, getting from a flat to a steep slope on the river bed. They will sit as it, as it changes. So as it goes from flat to steep, that exact line that goes across, that's called the lip. And the fish will sit on that facing upstream, waiting for fish to come in get sucked down waiting for mayflies, stoneflies, little bugs, caddis and things just to come wafting over and they will basically when the water comes over the lip it creates a little current uh, circulation like that so it comes over the lip and then it comes around and back up so the fish are able to sit there with minimal energy expenditure and they're going to be able to basically pick off food nice and easy so there's a lip over there I've just cast over um, and there's a fish on it right now, he's grabbed it like three or four times, there he is, oh, he's grabbed it five times, but he's came off, um, so that's, that's what I mean, there's a lip, you whack it up over the lip, you start reeling it past the lip, the fish will come out and whack it generally, like that fish just did four or five times. If you can see in there, there's a big area of slack that's away from the current, it's still clean water, it's still got oxygen in it, bait fish and things will hide in there, uh, all the sort of food source that a trout is after will still be in there but there's not current pumping making trout expend their energy all day so trout will go in there that's called a backwater and that's sort of you can it's sort of self-explanatory it's the back of the water so the river goes around and that's the back piece of it and big fish especially will go in there to get away from the current and just chill out and eat anything that sort of falls on the surface like a fish just rose in there as I was speaking looked like a pretty decent size not still full oh there's a fish over there just on the bottom that's in front of it oh that spooked him oh no he's after it oh I had him oh he was on for a while but um I my bail arm wasn't shut properly so he'll be, oh there he is, oh what the heck, jeez, that was, he came out of nowhere, he was just sitting in front of me. He's not bad at all, he's fair condition. Keep him upside down, hopefully he calms down a little. There you go, hook out, there's the fish, good condition little guy, shoots off. Oh my jeez, my drag went crazy. I don't know, it was just really loose from the last. Jeez. Oh, he's off, sweet. I love it when they self release. Oh, oh, he missed it. There you go. How's that, guys? Like clockwork? When they grab it, they just go crazy. How's he hooked? He's hooked weirdly. There you go. Out. Turn them upside down, they chill out. See, like that? They chill. Then you turn the right way up and shoo! Good little trick for you guys. So I flicked it way up under this tree here and something tapped it. So I think, oh, another little rainbow. And sh as it came to about there, my little splinter emerges from the glare and behind it emerges a five pound brown. Big orange beast. He grabbed it, bit of pressure, pricked him. Drag pulled, popped out, fish shoots off.
So there you go guys, you can trial and trial away all day and get piddler after piddler, no problem, can't even avoid catching them if you try. And um, then when it comes to the one brown, the big decent fish that you're after to that day, he'll come along, prick himself and fly off. And you'll be surprised how often that happens, to be honest. It, it's just a fact of life for me pretty much. Um, whereas if you want to hook them they usually, oh that's a rainbow, you'll probably find that they tend to be hooked fairly deep down like on the tongue, something like that. That's a little rainbow. There you go. Really good to keep these fish in the water because you know, oh, power off. I'm going back in. This little pool's given me maybe five fish or so. Probably water all over the leaves. Alright, stay tuned. Absolute monster. And now, uh, it's been pretty hard to, to get it in, but I finally managed it. It almost snapped me off many times. Off it goes. Graceful release as ever. Absolute monster. Looking for a big fish this time. Not so keen on these smaller rainbows. What's this? Oh, that was a big brown. Lovely. Just lost him. Probably should have set the hook, but you know. So that's exactly what I wanted, and I freaking lost it. I thought, truthfully, I did think it was a little rainbow until he was splashing on the surface, so that was why I didn't set the hook. And there's a rainbow. He's not so bad though, you know, good fish, fish is a fish is a fish, even though he's not that big brown, it's still a fish, and here there's some shallows to land him on, so that's decent, and it's the first fish in the last probably half hour, if not a little more, probably in like a half hour, -ish. here we go. Oh, up the nostrils, in the mouth, all over the glasses. There's one. Oh, is that a brown? The one that, I, not this fish, the one I was looking at might have been a brown. And the amount of fish I've done this with in my life, but he, I'm holding my hand, I'm hooked, been a lot of them, off it goes, I'm hooked, just because I don't really feel like catching too many more piddly, don't get me wrong, I, I do enjoy it, catching these rainbows, but after a while you kind of do end up logging for something a little bigger, it's still exciting, it doesn't get old, but it, when it, like the fishing doesn't get old, but the the small rainbows can a uh, pretty decent catch. There's there's another one fish of this size. Oh, this guy's going pretty fast. Ooh, he jumps himself straight onto the bank. Don't want that. This guy's a little bigger. Um, so this is probably about a pound. This guy. He'll be following it right now, most likely. No hits. Interesting. Oh, there he is. Oh, little brownie. <laughs> I can still see him too. Maybe he'll get this this time. There he is. Got him. That's what I was talking about. Sight fished. Oh, there he goes. Sweet. Fish. Little brown. Came out from under the trees there. Still really fresh. I don't know how this guy got hooked this way. Really strange hookup. There you go guys, beautiful little bar of gold. Bit of blood from his mouth there, but he's swim off fine. 
Hook didn't take any of his mouth with it, so that's good. He should be fine. Just a bit of the mouth blood there, nothing to do with gills or anything. Still not the size I want, but still a fish. Perfect took up. Right, let's get uh, something a little bigger, maybe. I'll uh, get a cast up under this. Bit of structure here, get a fish out for you guys. Oh, that skimmed the surface. There's one. Gotta love the gear, man. Silky smooth. Oh, that's not a bad one. Oh, he, he's about the same, actually. About the same as that last fella. Really shouldn't be that hard to unhook. Sweet. Let's get something bigger, eh? That one's less likely of catching, but I did just, I did just get a, a bump. Oh, there's a fish after it. There he is. Oh, I lost him. <laughs> he followed it and then grabbed it right by my feet. Oh, fish just rose over there, but my thing landed right on top of him. Something here guys, don't know what it is but I feel like it's a slightly better fish, oh, that was a bigger one guys, I saw him squirming around on the end of my hook, uh, out there I saw the big colour of his flank light up against the surface and uh, that was a big brown, so uh, yeah, don't know what I could have done there any better, I kept pressure on and everything, but you never know, I mean sometimes they just get off. I hooked a decent one this time. I'm trying not to let it get off because it's actually a fair fish. Ooh, he hooked it on the drop. Oh, he grabbed it on the drop. I fucked it up under the trees and he took it as it was going on its way down to the bottom. So I set the hook. It looks like he swallowed it right down so I'll take it a little more easy on him. I almost took that lure off, I was about to take it off, but I thought I'll persevere for this little pull just to make sure it doesn't really work and uh, smack. This guy smoked it. This guy I think I'll net. Just because it's a little bit better of a fish. Alright, let's get him in. I'll show you this guy. This is not the fish of the day, not quite, but get in there. He's getting a big, bit better. There's the lure, just a big old softy hooked in the bottom of his mouth. That's lucky I set the hook so hard because it was just hooked there, bottom of the jaw. Anyway, here's the fish, a bit better. Alright. Let's get something two or three times that size. So I've done something a bit retarded. I've gone and um, plucked a couple of flies from my hat. Cicada deer here fly there as the float and a um, little three mil beaded pheasant tail there as the nymph for the dropper. Uh, and I'm just going to try and pluck a fish out of this pool. Somehow, I'm going to try and spin fish a dry dropper. Not really cast very far. It's 
going to be super difficult to know if a fish has got it or not because the nymph does touch the bottom. That's not really going far enough. That's a bit better. Um, I had my flies drifting behind me and a fish smoked the nymph and started screaming downstream. Big old rainbow. So uh, you just missed that on the camera. Oh well. That was crazy. It was like tearing down like crazy. Anyway, I'll get this back in because now I know I can actually use it. I was just letting it drift like that and swinging in the current and he just smoked it. wasn't even looking, I just... I was, my rod almost got yanked out of my hand. That was cool. Right, that's out there. Can't see it very well. Guy's a bit sinky. Oh, there he is. Yes, it works. Fly fishing with a spin rod. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> See, look, no, he can't even pull drag. That last one was screaming. I'm going to loosen this for him. This guy's a little submarine. Fat little guy. How cool is that, guys? Fly fishing. A cicada and a nymph. Man, this guy's a porker. Yeah, fishing a cicada and a nymph on a f spin rod. No fly rod or anything. Look how porkous he is. He's got a good little belly on him. Awesome. Do it again. Just hooked another rainbow on the nymph. I'm pulling them out of here like crazy. Just dry fly and nymph on the spin rod. I wonder what will happen when a big fish comes for the dry, eh? <laughs> this is a bit ridiculous to be honest, but whatever works, and it's a bit of fun. They're all liking the pheasant tail for once. Usually when I fly, fish that fly on a fly rod, it, nothing really eats it, but it's smoking it today. I can see a big old fish here. He's swimming across now, but hopefully that'll do it. That's over him. He's looking up to the dry fly. Yep. Oh, hooked him on the dry fly. Brownie. What the heck? I've caught a brown trout on the dry fly on my spin rod. Has this even been done before? That was the fish I was looking at. I just didn't know it was like uh, actually a fish until now. Good. Blimmin' good. Just engulf the dry fly and he's off. Ugh. What have I done? He's just not ready to be netted. Look at this guys, I need to show you this. This is ridiculous. In his mouth there, cicada. <laughs> oh, that's pretty crazy. There's the cicada down there. There, there we go guys. I'll show you this if I can untangle. There you go. There's the fly. <laughs> Just a big old deer, cic deer hair cicada. This fish actually ate its subsurface, which is probably why you wouldn't have seen him take on camera. Um, so he didn't actually stick his head out the water for it. Uh, as he went, well it was sort of, it was floating when he went for it, but when he opened his mouth um, and sucked in water from the surface, it came down with the water from the top, so he didn't actually break the surface, he actually just sucked the water off the surface and the fly came with it. I want to weigh this fish, it's probably about a good two pounds. Let's see. Yep, yeah, bang on two pound. That's probably fish of the day. I, I caught one at the start of the day that was pretty similar size, really. But there you go, guys. Good brown trout. Probably going to kick pretty. There you go. Oh, he's shot off. All right. Three here. So that's another brown. I've caught a bunch of browns today. More than I usually ever catch up here. And he's hooked in both lips, so you've got to push it sideways somewhat. Get one in the other out. There you go, he's perfectly fine. And swims off, just like that. 